before and says, I never get tired of telling you this because we all need reminders. If you follow it, you'll find it's a great safeguard for your souls. So let us obey this command. What are we are going through? Rejoice because you are united to the Lord. Paul, after saying all this thing, he suddenly changes his tone in verse 2 and he says, Watch out for those dogs, those dangerous people, as if to say that there are certain things that can steal away the joy that you have in the Lord. Paul is actually speaking about a group of Christians who is telling that you can be accepted by God only if you do certain external acts. People think only if I roll down, climb mountains, kneel and climb steps, or only if I pray through saints, God will accept my prayers. We are acceptable to God only because we are His children. We are the children of God, not because of any external act that you did. So, no first thing that can take away the joy that we have in our union with God is when we place our identity, our significance, our security in the external things, even if it is a very good thing. A child of God is the one who is able to connect to God through His Spirit, who is able to worship Him through His Spirit. So when feelings does not allow you to worship God, go to your room, worship Him, sing unto Him in tongues, reach out to Him, then the feelings disappear. Then he says, another mark of a person who is a child of God is a person who boasts in Christ. We can boast in the fact that Jesus died. He paid it all by dying for me. The fact that He is on the right hand of God interceding for me. The fact that in all things, He is at work for the good of me. The fact that God is my helper. What can man do to me? The fact that God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Paul says, refuse to put any trust in what you have done. Any confidence in yourself. Don't approach God because I have been humbled all my life. Never hurt anybody. We have all got this tendency. We all want to rejoice in our achievements. But Paul says, one day I realized, the only way I could be accepted by God is by placing my faith upon what Jesus has done for me. And that day I realized, all the other things which I considered as recommendations before God, it only had the value of smelling garbage before God. So I threw it all away. Now when I approach God, the only thing I hold on is my faith in what Jesus has done for me. I believe, you know, despite our understanding of the simple gospel, not able to rejoice. First reason is because see, many times our rejoicing is based on our achievements. The second thing is, many times we have very preconceived understanding, knowledge about this gospel. We think Christian life is all about, oh, you accepted Jesus, you put your faith in Jesus, you have become a child of God, and that is my destiny. This understanding probably we have reached yeah, no, there is nothing much, you know, further has affected our rejoicing in the Lord. Did this simple gospel of putting faith in Jesus had the same effect on Paul? Did he become less ambitious after, you know, accepting this simple gospel than he was before? Why was Paul ambitious to start off with? Paul was ambitious only with the purpose that he wanted to have a bold standing before God. And when he realized that the only way to be bold before God is by putting faith in Jesus, he did not stop there. He says that, I want to grow in that oneness with Jesus. I want to know Jesus. I want to know the resurrection power of Jesus. I want to know everything that is available in Jesus. Even if I go through sufferings, I want to experience the fellowship with Him. Even in, in my death, I want to be like Him. This was Paul's ambition. Now you may ask, brother, but I am already righteous in Christ. You no, know, how can I grow in that righteousness? Now one thing we need to understand about righteousness is, the only righteousness that we have got is the righteousness that we receive from Jesus. The righteousness is actually in Jesus. And the experience of that righteousness is related to your intimacy with Jesus. We call it as, we appropriate the righteousness of Jesus in our life. Everything is available in Jesus. But the question is, are you appropriating it? Are you receiving it? Many times we may come and sing songs like this. There is power in the name of the Lord. You know, not experience a little bit of that power. You know, there is joy in the name of the Lord. There is healing in the name. But not experienced any of those things in our lives. Paul keeps saying, you know, I have not reached where I should be. I keep walking towards that day when finally I will be all that Christ saved me for. You know, Paul wanted to be a maximum Christian. He wanted to experience all that is available in Jesus. This is what Paul continued to say. You know, every mature believer, you know, should have this desire to know Jesus and take hold of everything that is made available in Him. How do we know Jesus and experience Him? It is through prayer. It is by diligently studying the Word of God. You know, it is, you know, by prayer and fasting, Jesus told, you experience the power of God. The whole purpose is to know Him more and to experience Him. We all know this truth. But why we don't 
press on to experience this. I believe the main reason, you know, is what Paul says here also is because our past failures. You know, many times we say, oh, I prayed for that person. No healing happened. I asked for filling of the Holy Spirit, you know, but no filling happened. I stopped praying. I stopped sharing gospel because nobody changed, you know. We stopped. But Paul says, I am bringing all my energies to bring one on one this thing. I forget the past. I am looking forward to what is ahead. I am holding on to what word says. You don't trust your feelings, your experiences. Remember what the word of God says. The people of this world are more persevering than the people of God. Thomas Alva Edison failed thousand times before he discovered this electric bulb. How many of us say, I prayed thousand times before I gave up? Once, twice, ten times, we give up. And we need to persevere because God's word is true. You remember when Jesus took hold of you that day? No. When you knew, you put your faith in Jesus. But he had a purpose in your life. Not to just sit in the church and go. You know, Paul says, I am pressing forward to take hold of that purpose for which Jesus has taken hold of me. And Paul says, even if you may not agree with all that I am telling, God is able to open this to you. God is able to make you understand this. Only whatever you understand, put it into practice. The way to experience the things of God is, you know, take those simple steps of obedience. Finally, Paul gives a warning. If you remain stagnant, not going to God for that experience of joy in the Lord, the stagnancy can always be dangerous because you will slowly find your joy elsewhere. There are Christians who experience the joy of the Lord at one point of time. Today they have become enemies of the cross. Their appetite has become their God. Their eyes have now become glued to this world. They are roaring in shameful things. They are believers. But Paul is saying, you know, their future is eternal loss. You can experience the power of resurrection, the resurrection power, the joy of the Lord, you know, in your present circumstances. Yes, you know, Paul say there is limitations. We are far away from our homeland. In heaven, where all these joys will be complete and made perfect. And also, we are in this weak bodies and there will be temptations due to this body. There is feeling and emotions due to this body. And Paul is far away from his homeland. In a person, and he himself writes, he struggled in his lowly weak body. He says that there is someone in my flesh, but that did not prevent him from experiencing the resurrection power of Jesus. Don't be a minimal Christian. Be a maximum. Christian, a man and woman who is able to rejoice whatever happens, who is willing to press on to the fullness of the experience that is available in Christ, knowing Him, you no, know, experiencing resurrection power and you no, know, the fellowship of Jesus. Whatever be the situations that you may be going through, forgetting the past failures, pressing on to take hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of you. And finally, you will experience the fullness of all these experiences when Jesus come and He will change you totally to the likeness of Him. So brothers and sisters, don't be minimal Christians. We Will you be that maximal Christian?